Hey, hey, Internet! Swag here, and welcome back to part two of the Flying Chicken minigame. In this one, we'll be hooking up our obstacle course of choice. I went with buckets, and setting up a score system so we end up with a fully fledged minigame. So, without further ado, let's get on it. Picking up where we left off, I made ourselves a few little reminders on what we did last time. The flaps chicken execution activates if the button is pressed and make sure that our chicken flaps if the game is running. Toggle's game on collision is the setup that deactivates the game once the trigger volume hits an object. Boot up behavior is what happens when the game first turns on. And game over behavior is the opposite and is what happens when the game stops. So with our reminder out of the way, first thing we are going to do is put our environment on a piston. So gadgets, gizmos, piston v2. Put that here. With a configure, detach our control chip from our piston. We are going to once more require the piston set speed, both to start it moving once we turn it on, and to stop moving once it turns off or hits a collision. I want to put that there, put it in sequence. This is when it stops, so piston set speed is zero is appropriate. This is when it starts moving. So we put that in between here. And there. And set the speed to not even a meter. I think comma five will do just fine. Far as the other values go, I might have fiddled around with them a little bit. Both the piston set speed and piston set acceleration. Uh, you can mess with these values to adjust the flight behavior of your chicken or whatever other bird of your choosing you would use for this setup. So there we have a piston set speed and there we have our other piston set speed. We need to set the max distance of this piston to something really high. So let's set that to 200. Now this is just to update the value, this doesn't have much of a use for the game itself. But if we play and stop it from playing once, then it will update its max distance to 200 meters. Otherwise it will just be stuck like that. And we do not yet have a piston set distance when the game restarts. So let's copy that one, but set it to this piston instead. Set that up. To whenever the button is pressed. And this distance should be zero. And this will reset the environment for us. So, before we wire the environment to it, let's give this thing a test. If I press this button, it will move forwards. And if the trigger volume hits an object, it stops. That's lovely. Now let's wire that to there and see how it goes. Excellent timing. And there we go. It hits a collision. It stops. Anybody playing can see exactly where things went wrong. It doesn't reset immediately. Very nice. Now, um, if you've been paying attention, you can see that the um, buckets stick out a little bit underneath the green strip. We're going to be using this to make a score system that will keep track of how far your chicken has flown. 
So we get another trigger volume, but put this one back a little bit. About the distance that the bucket normally is, so that these will activate the trigger volume whenever the chicken has passed them. So let us get an instance integer and two set value chips and an add chip. There we go. Now one of these set values variable value we're going to keep at zero because this is what will reset whenever the game starts. So this will reset the score upon a new game. Um, which is once again put in front of the delay. Put that there, put that there. The other one will take the score it was previously at. Add one whenever this trigger volume has an object entering it and that will increase the score. Now we can't see that just yet so what we're going to get from our other gadgets is a text tweet to gizmo. First we get a two string and then we get a string string format. Add an input. Our format is going to be player name, semicolon, score. Now value number one is squiggly line zero squiggly line. Value number two is squiggly line one squiggly line. And this will be our score and it will set that text every time it gets a value. Let's see, the player requires another two string because this is the person pressing the button. And we wire that into our PEXV2 gadget and if everything is appropriate, let's put that there. Let's give that a easily readable color. And move that up a little bit. Now let's see if we can get a nice score going. So start the game. And once it has passed the first obstacle, One point, two points, and there we go. Now we do need sort of a finish, so let me just build one real quick. There we go. Let's see how that lines up. So once it hits, there we go. That hits at about the same time. Let's move it all the way back. Now that we have a finish, we want to make it so that if we actually reach the finish, the score doesn't tell you the score, but it says like, yay, you made it, excellent. 
So we're going to see how much obstacles we have. In other words, what the score will be when we reach the finish, which is 19 obstacles. So the finish is the 20th obstacle. I'm going to get an equals. There we go. And say if this equals 20. And an if expression. If this equals 20 is true. If it does not yet equal 20, then else I want it to say this text. But let's get another string format and get the player once more. This can use one input less and say player name wins. Exclamation mark. So that if this score reaches 20, then it will give player wins as a result on our text gadget. So let's see how this goes. Hey, excellent. And that was the Flying Chicken minigame tutorial. Even if you haven't been building along, anything you learned that you didn't know before is an important step to getting there anyways. If you've been building along, feel inspired to make your own spin-off where you make your chicken breathe fire and fight enemies instead, or even have an idea for a whole original side-scroller game of your own, please give the tag of Sidescroll2021 and have it published before January the 10th, and I'll feature your room in a special Side Scroll Challenge hub room, as well as the challenge winners getting a prize of a thousand tokens. But for now, I hope you use your newfound knowledge wisely, and see you in the next one. Bye!